Hi guys, this is Carly and welcome back to the Planted Carly Flower here on YouTube. I really appreciate you stopping by. Today we're going to go over my succulent selection and what I have in my current collection. I hope you see something that you haven't seen before or something that you are like, oh my gosh, I need to have that. And I would love to see your succulents and tell me what you have down in the comments. Um, yeah, let's get right into it. Okay guys, the first one I have here is a Sansevieria bird's nest. Um, this is one of my favorite in my collection. I got it from a local plant shop here in Albuquerque called Plant Me Later. And it's beautiful. The, the striking foliage, the pattern, uh, you just cannot beat it. It's beautiful. I water this plant every two to three weeks currently. Um, I do have it in a low light situation. It's about 10 to 15 feet from a southern window and about 10 feet from an eastern window on the other side. So it, it does get pretty low light and it's doing really well. This particular sense of area does well in low light. It doesn't need bright direct sun. Um, it's getting a small leaf inside. I don't know if you can see right in there. Boom. see it and it's doing really well uh it does stay pretty firm and succulent like and it's got this striking uh variegation on the edges i paid about ten dollars for this four inch pot at my local nursery um i have not priced these in other places this was an absolute like oh my gosh that's beautiful i want it by i hadn't planned on buying a sansevieria but it's beautiful and i'm really glad that it's in my collection it is in soil it's still in the soil it came from from the nursery i haven't seen a reason that i would need to repot this or change the soil out because it is thriving in the soil that it's in so i just left it alone it still has the tag on it from the nursery so you can see there how much i paid for it and it does mention that it's slightly toxic so don't let your pets or your kids chew on the plant and you should probably be okay um yeah it's gorgeous and i really really enjoy it it's one of my favorites like i said and i can't wait to get more sansa areas just like it i can't wait till it grows i'm planning on putting it on a plant stand next to my dresser or my entertainment center here in my room and right now it's just sitting on top of that growing and thriving and just being its cute little self um but yeah the sansa area bird's nest really pretty love it okay um, the next one I have here, I actually won in a giveaway from the Blue Botanist on Instagram. I will link her Instagram down below. And it is a mother of thousands. I do have it in the Della Tanks plotting mixture, and it's really cool. This particular succulent is really neat because you can see the little ridges and the little points on the leaves. Let's see if I can get a good... You can see how it's kind of like a saw, like saws, like teeth from a saw or something on there. Anyway, what this does, it's called the mother of thousands for a reason. All those little points and ridges when this plant is doing well, grows little baby plants. So you eventually will have a bunch of little plants stuck to the outer edges of the leaves that will fall off and create more mother of thousands. This is actually a pretty, considered a very invasive plant. People don't like this plant to, uh, to go outside of its typical environment because it will take over. It will drop thousands and thousands of little babies and these things will multiply and multiply like bunnies. They'll be everywhere. So, excuse the light, I, I am so sorry. I'm filming this at an inopportune time for the light. <laughs> um, let me see if I can actually move a little bit to make this a little bit more streamlined. Give me one okay, moment. Okay, a little bit better. We're losing our planty background, but at least I'm not squinting at you like a psycho. Okay, anyway, back to what I was saying. This plant is considered invasive. You don't wanna plant this outside in an area it doesn't belong in because it will drop its babies everywhere and just take over and basically that's not good for the environment if it's not supposed to be in that environment. But yeah, it's just a little baby right now, so I don't have any little little baby of thousands or anything. Um, but it's it's doing really well. It's it's growing, it's making a lot of aerial roots. I probably need to put this in a bigger pot eventually. But it's doing really well. I water this about every week or two, probably about 
probably about every two weeks. And it's just growing great. It's thriving. It's getting new little leaves right there in the center of this. I don't know if you can see those. It's getting new little leaves. And yeah, it's doing really well. Um, I do keep this here in my bedroom under some grow lights for now. Um, it does not like direct light from what I've read. I've never tried to put it in direct light. <laughs> I've never tried to put it in direct light, but I keep it mostly under the grow lights for now. And then it did say when I read about it that it likes Eastern exposure. Um, so we're gonna try that when it gets a little warmer and I'll probably move it downstairs. But yeah, so far I haven't had this plant too terribly long, maybe a couple months, but it's doing really great. And I've got the care down for it. So it's growing and I'm really excited to see where, where it takes me and where it goes. Um, yeah, so that's my mother of thousands. Okay, this next one is another uh, Sansevieria, and it's the Gold Hyeni, H-A-H-N-I-I. -I. And this one is a little more tricky. Um, I also got this in the same giveaway, actually, that I got the Mother of Thousands in from the Blue Botanist. Again, Instagram in the description box. And this one, like I said, is a little more difficult to get for me. Um, I have it here in terracotta in my personal soil mix and it's doing good like there's nothing necessarily wrong with it it came a little damaged from the shipping the tips were a little brown what have you um it is getting a new leaf in the middle as well so i guess it can't be too doing too terribly bad but for some reason these just stay so limp and bendy and i don't know if that's just typical of this particular sense of area but they definitely are not nice and firm like this one um i do water these on the same schedule unless like one of them's more wet than the other um but they typically get to be dry about the same time i did just water this last night and it had been about two and a half weeks since i previously watered it um but it was even more floppy than this when i watered it so we might end up having to take this out of here and just check on the roots and see what's what's shaken um this is an old soil mix that i made so i may need to put this in a more chunky area mix i'm not 100 percent sure but you know how it goes. There's plant successes, there's plant fails, and then there's plant mysteries. This is a mystery right now, but we're gonna turn it into a plant success. So stay tuned for that. I'll probably film my journey uh, with this plant, trying to get it to its full glory. Um, but right now it's kind of just meh. It's not necessarily dying and struggling, but it's definitely not thriving. So we're gonna figure this one out together. But anyway, so you can see that the plant is beautiful. It's got this beautiful golden variegation along the leaves. It has the dark green foliage in the center and it's just absolutely gorgeous. Um, I highly recommend Sansevierias. I do believe some Sansevierias have been reclassified as not Sansevierias anymore. I can never keep up. Um, it was sold to me as a Sansevieria. I'm eventually gonna have to look that up so that I can be more informed and know more about my own collection. But as of right now, since I have not honestly looked into that, I'm still just calling it a Sansevieria. Um, I'm not sure how that works or what's going on with that. But anyway, that's the current the current state of affairs. My Sansevieria gold high niniai niai. Anyway, here it is. It's beautiful. Okay, this is one of my personal favorites. This is my Sansevieria bonsell. Um, me and my boyfriend call him our Patrick starfish because this is a starfish plant and he is one of my favorites. Now I almost killed him and it's not like you think it's not like, Oh, well you overwatered him. You gave him root rot. You only was supposed to water these every once in a while. Uh, no, I put him on a shelf behind a bigger plant to clean off my nightstand where I keep him, forgot to move him back and forgot he existed. <laughs> And I didn't water him for like three months. When I finally found him, he was so shriveled, I was sure I had killed him. I thought, that's it. Patrick is dead. I'm going to have to find Patrick 2.0. But I thought, you know, I'm just going to give him some love, see if I can fix him. I gave him water. And after about 48 hours, he was still shriveled like a prune. And I thought, the roots are too far gone. They're not going to drag any water up. I'm like, I'm going to give him a little more water thoroughly thoroughly water him and just pray for the best leave him alone let him sort out his life and he did he eventually sorted his life out it took about a week but he's finally plump he's finally nice and juicy again and he's getting a baby a little leaf right there is coming out so he can't be too terribly upset 
Now, these plants do like direct light. It sits on my nightstand, which gets southern direct exposure, especially through the summer. I leave him there. Um, I read when I was reading about um, these plants that giving it bright, direct southern light inspires this plant to flower. So I'll see if I can find a picture of the flowers. I decided, you know what? I'm not really a flower person. I don't really care if my plants flower. Although I do feel like Hoya flowers are like a badge of honor because some of those, some of those suckers are hard to get to flower. Um, but stuff like this, I don't really care if it flowers. But I want this one to flower for some reason that I can't quite explain to you yet. But I'm going to go ahead and leave him in some direct sun all summer long. I did get him in, I want to say September, August or September of last year um, from the new Plant Co. I will leave their page in the description box below. And I paid like $4 for him. He has grown a lot though. He was like a third of the size. He was a teeny little starfish plant. And now he's getting much bigger. He's in a six inch pot. Um, I haven't checked his roots or anything since I got him. Um, his water, his, his soil was super, super cocoa core heavy and very, very wet when I got him, which probably made sense for wherever they were, but it was not what I like to keep my succulents in sensitive areas in. So I switched it out from my potting mix at the time and he's just done really well in it. Um, this I believe is just potting, standard potting mix with a ton of perlite in it. I wasn't even using orchid bark that much then. Um, so yeah, it's, it's thriving he's getting a little little baby like i said and i'm hoping to see this guy flower this year that would be super amazing i'm going to keep him in that direct sun like the website i read suggested and he's doing great he's nice and firm again so i won't be watering him for a while but this time i won't forget about him so yeah you never know you know when you have 200 plus plants things are bound to fall through the cracks be gentle to yourself sometimes you can save them sometimes you can't but that's okay we live and we learn and I learned I won't lose them again okay so this next one is the first succulent plant I ever got um, I have a love-hate with succulents simply because I live in New Mexico and there is a succulent succulent or cactus at every corner I live in the desert they're outside in my yard they're in every grocery store, they're in Target, they're everywhere. Succulents and cactuses are a big thing here because they're native to my area. And I'm just like, I want different. I want something I don't see every day. And so it took me a long time to start buying um, cactuses and succulents. But the first thing I bought that I really loved, I saw it on, on Amazon. Can you believe it? I bought this on Amazon, is my sunset jade look at that beautiful when you have this in direct high light it turns a giant a nice maroon red color um it's not as maroon as it was because winter and it hasn't been in direct sun as much and and what have you the shorter days um but in the summer this will really 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 turn red i'll see if i can find a picture of what it looked like last summer um but I, I can't promise anything. I wasn't really much into taking a whole lot of pictures at that point in my plant career. So I don't know that I have any really good pictures of it, but I will try. Um, funny story, this plant we call Luca after Luca Doncic. I'm a huge Dallas Mavericks fan. We're a big sports family. Go Rams, go Mavericks. And that's that's why I named, I named him Luca after Luca Doncic from the Dallas Mavericks. Um, he's my favorite player. He, that's my team. And that's the name of this plant. Not all my plants have names, just certain ones, but this is Luca. So when I tell my boyfriend, hey, I need Luca, I need to water him or whatever, my boyfriend knows exactly what plant to go get me because this is Luca. Um, when I got this plant, it actually had a pretty nasty case of fungus gnats. I mean, I ordered it off Amazon. I'm not 100% sure what shop it came from, but I'm gonna go ahead and assume that you don't get the best quality plants on Amazon. I have no idea. But that's not their niche, so I, I, have, I have no idea. Maybe Amazon's a great place to get plants, who knows. But it had fungus gnats, like bad, bad, bad fungus gnats. So I tried watering it with mosquito bits for a while and didn't really get rid of it. Um, so I put a sticky trap and that did help. Um, I put out uh, little cups of water with 
dish soap in them that was supposed to lure the fungus gnats to their deaths. Um, it didn't lure very many to their death. Um, I tried letting the plant dry out to extreme levels so that there was nothing for the fungus gnats to lay their eggs in. I could not get rid of the fungus gnats. I finally had to unpot him, put him in fresh soil, and put him in this little white pot out of his nursery pot. And ever since then, I haven't had a problem. No fungus gnats, no issues. Um, I water him probably about the same as on Patrick Star. I wait till his leaves get a little wrinkly and soft, and then I give him a nice thorough drink. And he has gotten so big. I'll see if I can find a picture of what he looked like when he was just a little baby Luca. And um, yeah, look, that's kind of funny, Luca. Anyway, um, yeah, so he has grown a whole ton. I cannot wait for him to grow even more this summer. Um, he is my tops. I love him and I basically protect him with my life. <laughs> I make sure he gets all the sun, all the love, and he's doing really well. You can see that he's been getting really good sun because he's not leggy at all. He's dense, he's luscious, he's got his little red underside still, which will get even more red. The whole plant will turn red in the summer. It's really beautiful. I highly recommend a sunset, sunset jade plant. These also do really well outdoors, but I keep all my plants inside. Um, I don't live in the most cellar of neighborhoods. Anything that I put outside in either my front or backyard tends to disappear. And that's literally anything. Even if it's trash, it will disappear. I don't know. But anyway, yeah, so that's my sunset jade plant, my Luca. And he again lives in my southern window here in my bedroom. Okay, the next plants I got, I don't know the names of them. Sorry, I don't. Um, if you know the names of them, leave them in the comment section down below. Um, but I got these plants through a subscription that I randomly saw on Instagram and decided to sign up for. I want to say it's like Sucka Studios or whatever. I'll find what it is and put the, the website down below. But they're really cool. They send you two succulents a month or every two months or every three months. However often you decide, you get to sign up for how often you wanna have um, deliveries, and it's like 16 or $17. And one of the first deliveries I got were these two plants, and I just potted them together. Um, and I, again, I don't know their names. This one reminds me of a little pineapple. It has a little baby here on top that I haven't separated yet. Um, and I think this is an Echeveria or Echeveria or something like that. Um, but it's really pretty, it's gorgeous. I need to bury the stem a little bit more. And then my little pineapple succulent right here, has, they've just grown so much. This used to be all in the soil and then it just kind of grew out of the soil. Um, but they're both rooted, they're both in there, they're beautiful. And I don't really have a whole lot to say about them because I honestly don't know what they are. Um, I was really bad when I started the subscription service. I did it for three months and then I canceled it because money and I just didn't need a subscription service. I would rather buy plants that I want. Um, it was my first dabble trying a subscription service and I discovered pretty quickly that it wasn't for me. Um, but I do love the plants that I did get and uh, they're really pretty. They have the beautiful purple and it's little fuzzy leaves and it's, it's really gorgeous. And again, it's got the little baby on top that I need to, I, don't know, I might leave it, I might pull it off, I haven't decided, but it's doing really well and it also lives in direct sunlight in my southern facing window here in my bedroom. And then I have another pot that's very similar to that. A bunch of plants that I don't know what they are that I got from the subscription service. Oop, the yellow leaf. Pull that. Okay, it's not ready to come off yet. But yeah, it's a bunch of plants together that I put in this pot and they just kind of chill and hang out together. And they also live in my southern bedroom window and get direct sunlight and then bright sun, direct indirect light after the sun passes. But they're doing really well too. If you know what any of these are, definitely leave them in the, in the comment section down below. I'd love to know, um, but they're beautiful. Um, they, I like making little succulent arrangements. Um, for plants that are smaller because I feel like it fills out a pot. It's a nice statement piece. It's very decorative and I really enjoy it. Um, I have one more, one more here. And this I actually got in the same giveaway from the Blue Botanist on Instagram. And this is a variegated jade. Um, it came super, super rough in the mail, man. This little guy did not, did not like its travel. Like it did not. 
but you can see that the leaves are a little red because of my grow lights so they're getting a little sun stressed um, and it perked up after some water and some time it's nicely rooted it's getting new leaves um, so it's a little rough from the travel it did not fare well you can see the damage on this leaf um, but it is now currently thriving and growing and living its best life so hopefully this summer it'll grow a lot and I'll be able to propagate it and make it more than just one little stem um, so you know we have our fingers crossed for that but yeah that is pretty much am I get if I get them all I got them all that's pretty much my my succulent and uh, Sansevieria collection I really appreciate you guys sticking with me and hearing about all my succulents and, and everything so if you have any questions or if you want to tell me what kind of plants you like you think i might like um definitely leave me a comment down below i'm definitely getting more into these types of plants and i definitely want to expand my collection over the summer um so i can probably readily find most succulents and cactus where i live so i would love your suggestions um if you have any comments about any of my plants how i could better take care of them any general information you think i could know to take care of them better especially if it involves this mystery guest <laughs> why is he so diva-ish definitely let me know and uh i really appreciate everything you guys do for watching my channel for liking commenting and subscribing share with a friend if you think they might like it as well um other than that thank you for stopping by and i'll see you in the next one